Hi, Salam, Namaste. I'm Ishika Agarwal, an intern at the Sabha. Here's my take on the education system of Uttar Pradesh. The diversity of teaching is known worldwide. In Finland, for example, it is known to have a learning environment with no learning pressure. They pride themselves on their short school days, their long vacations, and only 2.8 hours of homework per week. Can you imagine? On the contrary, in India, we follow a tactic where course prep holds a proud position in our daily lives. Indian students spend about 12 hours per week completing extra assignments and homework assigned by the school. We can understand how the teaching methodology in India is disparate from the other countries. Dr. Harris Cooper, a professor in psychology and neuroscience, and a keen researcher of education stated that homework is like medicine. Too little and it will have no effect. Too much and it will make matters worse. Dr. Cooper has been doing studies on the effect of classwork and homework on children. And he has said again and again that too much written work kills the curiosity of the mind. In Uttar Pradesh, there are two to three main boards that are followed. The UP State Board, the CBSC Board, etc. As we all know, the Central Board of Secondary Education, CBSC, has started incorporating audio and visual aids in its classes to help children retain more information. They have adapted to a new learning pattern where education does not rely solely on textbooks. But still, notebook, notebook work is the main priority of these schools. Students are expected to jot down everything following the principle of written literacy. Everything once written forms an imprint in the mind. The other CBSC board is trying to focus and implement conceptual learning that most schools are still continuing with rote learning. CBSC syllabus more or less focuses on preparing students for engineering and medical entrance examinations. The board emphasizes on the use of NCRT books, which form the basis of all entrance examinations conducted in India. The main way of communication between students in this board is English. The Board of High School and Intermediate Education in Pradesh, also known as the UP State Board, has its own educational approach. It focuses on state level topics and follows the content of local relevance, which helps students in preparing for state level engineering and medical entrance tests. The syllabus is usually limited but deep when compared to other boards. Regional languages and culture have a prominent place in the syllabus. In the state board, the teachers focus on specific information about the state's culture and origin, where India as a whole is not considered. But the CBSC board somewhat tries to follow a holistic approach. Students of the UP board are not taught about other states, national heritage, or foreign countries for that matter. But the students of the CBSC board were educated about their own country, not answer simple questions relating to their state's heritage. Both factors prove lack of knowledge in some areas. The government should be inclined to create a balance between the two factors, which would ameliorate the learning of children. All students should be educated about their heritage as well as their whole nation's heritage. The CBSC board also underrepresents the Northeast region of India. The Northeast states are not counted as a whole of India and are not mentioned in its curriculum. Children are not taught about their country fully. And this also amplifies cultural imparity because later on, people refuse to count them as Indians and count them as Chinese or Korean or Japanese, etc. On assessing the syllabus of both boards, it was emphasized upon the fact that even though up till class nine, the same curriculum is followed in both the boards, the explanation of concepts in school are quite contrasting from one to the other. To bring both curriculums at par, the government had ordered for the UP board to replace its textbooks with NCRT books. NCRT will be made mandatory for class 9 to 12, except for the two subjects, study of agriculture and study of business. According to the views of parents, the UP board is harder than the CBSC board. Though the curriculum is less, it is all taught in depth. This is where the CBSC board lacks in the eyes of parents. The UP board teaches less, but in a detailed format. The CBSC board covers a vast range of topics, but they're vague and skeptical in some areas. A noticeable growth has been charted in schools. More and more students are enrolling every year, and 95% of the rural children have registered in the state boards in the past decade. Both boards receive equal importance, and all students are beneficiaries of the knowledge provided. This is the thing with an urban setting. There are more children going to private schools. However, the national ratio of government to private schools stands at 60 to 40. In some places, it is even 70 to 30. Anita Rampal, a professor at Delhi University's Department of Education, stated. 
As per the Economic Survey of 2019 to 2020, the government allocated rupees 6.43 lakh crore to higher educa to education normally. Out of this, 56,637 crore rupees went towards school education and 38,317 crore rupees went towards higher education. The federal government provides 7.7% of the funding and the state and local governments provide 46.7% and 45.6% of the funding. And it all goes to public education. In 2014 to 2015, Uttar Pradesh government spent rupees 13,102 per elementary school student from class one to eight. This is higher than the all India spending of rupees 11,252 per student. The budget has a provision of 783 crore for, uh, for improvement of education, sanitation, health, drinking water, and basic infrastructure facilities under the Pradhan Mantri Jan Vikas Karikram in minority dominated areas. This is what Finance Minister Suresh Khanna said in his budget speech. Throughout 2020 to 2021, the budget also has a provision of 479 crore rupees for educational facilities for modern subjects. Literacy rate rose 13.45 percentage points in UP over a decade from 2001, but there are wide regional disparities. In the northeastern district in Uttar Pradesh of Shweswati, the literacy rate is 49 percent, while in the best performing district, Ghazibad, which is in northwestern UP, it is 85 percent. The people to teacher ratio, the PTR, in the decade 2011 to 2020 has been recorded at an average of 39 is to 1, where the ratio all over India is 23 is to 1. About 22% of all elementary teacher posts in government schools in Uttar Pradesh are weakened, and the state should have 8,40,000 teachers, but a short by 21% of 1,76,000 teachers. Uttar Pradesh also reported the second highest teacher absenteeism which is 31% in rural public schools among 19 surveyed states in 2010. Do these private schools have some sort of elixir? What else would make them increase their prices other than some priceless Amrit? What do they teach their students, which is so much better than government schools? Instead of paying such a hefty amount in private schools, imagine what government schools could achieve by receiving a little financial and moral support from the parents and government. Uttar Pradesh has more than 9,000 schools for all levels of education. Students get access to more than 1,000 colleges and 63 universities for higher education. The government and private colleges of the state offer multifarious degree programs in science, arts, commerce, and other professional and technical streams. Infrastructure such as science, math, and computer labs, also counting libraries, is a crucial element of learning environments. There's strong evidence that high quality infrastructure facilitates better instruction, improves student outcomes, and reduces dropout rates, among other benefits. Now, here's an interesting question. If the government reduces their infrastructure, would it make the students less materialistic? Would it help the students become more efficient? If we compare the education infrastructure in Uttar Pradesh to that of other states, UP rates are the state with a lot of money spent on infrastructure. But if we reduce it, will it help make students less dependent and more efficient? I don't know what you think, but I think that obviously it would make them less materialistic. They learn to accomplish great feats with little things in their hands. They won't have to rely on any particular thing to achieve something in life. Teachers in public schools earn up to 468,948 rupees per year, while teachers in private schools earn up to 201,840 rupees per year. Uttar Pradesh has a large population of children aged from 5 to 14 years, but the correlation of teachers is less. Since the PTR in government schools is greater, the salary is also greater in the public sector. The more posts are occupied in the private education sector, the teachers are paid less there. The yearly fee of private schools is six or seven times that of government schools all over India. In Uttar Pradesh, it is mandatory to have some schools free of education for the poor, who cannot afford it. Most private schools in UP cost from 5,000 rupees to 15,000 rupees monthly. Government schools range up to an average of 1,500 to 2,000 rupees monthly. Do these private schools have some sort of elixir? What else would make them increase their prices other than some priceless Amrit? What do they teach their students, which is so much better than government schools? 
instead of paying such a hefty amount in private schools imagine what government schools could achieve by receiving a little financial and moral support from the parents and government but we can't say that they haven't done anything due to the pandemic the uttar pradesh government has banned any increases in the school fees and additional fees have been slashed off the accounts some private schools are in fear of closing due to the notice of a brief decrease in fees whereas government schools are receiving extra funding for online teaching as per the dice data only 0.02% of scheduled caste students were admitted while the school participation rate was just under 0.01% under the section 12 part 1 part c of the rte act 2009 This section aims at social integration in private aided schools by mandating admission of children belonging to socially disadvantaged and economically weaker sections for 25% of the seats in each class. Now moving to our next topic. In the highlights of a recent survey we observed that there are more girls than boys in government schools but more boys in private schools. The survey which was released on Monday showed that a total of 6.28 lakh girl students were enrolled in private schools the same figure for boys stood at 9.37 lakhs according to the sur- same survey the same data for government schools differs drastically registering enrollment of 8.1 lakh girls and 7.18 lakh boys in private schools 47.9% boys go against 39% girls in- indicating that parents prefer private schools for their boys and government schools for their daughters Uh, hello it's not patriarchy i mean come on how many more times do women need to prove that they're just as good as men if not better they have done what was thought impossible for them which was actually possible become president work at high posts be the head of na- multinational companies etc what else do you guys want us to do but if people still don't think that they've proved themselves then the people are delusional what do you see that lacks in women Anyway, it's not my place to decide what you think. But I would say that there's no direct link between wise and illiterate. Our society condemns those who are academically weak and stereotypes them as unwise. Philosophers express that wisdom comes with experience, not knowledge. I have come across many illiterate people who are much more wise than others. Our schools impart knowledge and means to migrate, but don't teach us the basic values. What use is higher education when it doesn't teach us how to respect our values and our people? All it promotes is foreign migration. They teach us to enthusiastically move to the US, UK, Australia, France, Italy, Greece, etc. But they don't instill values in us. Why shouldn't we remain and boost the economy and development in India? Why should we go settle somewhere else? As I said, it does not impart skills or instill values and honor our country, but teaches us to look down upon the knowledge system of the various communi- communities in diverse India. Everyone has a right to do whatever they want, and it looks like India is bound to have all Indians go away to a foreign country. Anyways, a piece of advice for students. We should not only focus on academics and subjects but but also include extracurricular activities and all skills in our daily life. As someone great once said, play is the way kids try the world on for size and imagine their place in it. Thank you.